All right, so I'm going to try to go over a quick animation tutorial uh, just to do a, a real basic little ball jump. And we'll see, we'll go over some of the tools that we'll use and how to sort of uh, do a, just a simple little jump from one place to another, uh, which is a nice little study in uh, a couple of different um, attributes of, uh, what would I want to say, the um, principles of animation there. So I got myself uh, set up here. And so, you know, it looks nice. I like to work uh, trying to make it look nice. I've got a little um, shadows here with my lighting turned on. I've got all the gizmos turned on here. I've got a little ambient inclusion so I can see where things are. Uh, and I just have a ball and a little backdrop. And if we do a quick look at uh, my scene hierarchy, uh, you'll see that I've got a couple of things set up. Uh, so here is my ball. And... I've got a group here that I'm going to call rotate and I've got a group here that um, I'm going to call uh, ball top. You can call it whatever you want, um, but basically you'll notice that the way my um, transforms are positioned, uh, my ball is just default. Uh, I don't want to touch that. I have a rotate transform which is at the center of my ball. Um, oh, it should be at the center of my ball. Looks like it's actually a little low, so I'm going to fix that by holding down D and then V to snap to vertex. Whoops. Uh, D and V, and I'm going to snap it to my center line of the ball. Okay. That was interesting. Okay, so back to my perspective view here. So I have my rotate uh, is set. And my idea for that is that if I need my ball to rotate on its axis, um, I can just do it with that. Um, and then I've got this ball top, and I'm just going to call it top group, I think, GRP. Um, and that's really, I think, where the bulk of my animation is going to come from uh, the ball um, leaning um, from this point where it's touching the floor uh, to the ball um, uh, squashing and stretching, which I'm just going to do with the scale indicator here. I'm not going to go worry about deformers and things like that in this case. So that's my setup. Um, so if you see me... Um, moving through these I might select this and you might see um, a couple things change as I'm arrowing through and I'm just using the up and down arrow to move up and down my group hierarchy there. Okay so that's enough of that. Um, now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up I'm going to tap this button down here and this will open up our graph editor um, below so you can see sort of um, the addition of keyframes uh, throughout the, the shot here. So we're just going to do a little quick jump. Um, I think it's going to be very quick. Um, so uh, usually we want to think about 24 frames per second. And if you're ever curious in the preferences, you can check and see what your animation settings are set at. Under settings, uh, time, we have uh, film at 25 frames per second, 24 frames per second. So you can set it to whatever you want, actually. Um, or I guess within this range. Um, it's quite a few options there, but um, we're going to work at 24 for this. Um, so I've got this set up, and uh, let's see. So let's begin. So the first thing we want to do is block in our action. Actually, first thing I want to do is figure out how long I want to be working with, because right now I've got 120 frames to deal with across the bottom here, and I just want to deal with about one second of that. Uh, so I'm going to put in 24 frames. Um, so 1001, it's going to be 1001, and I'm just going to think about this little jump here across 1001. All right, so if I were to, um, if I were to sketch this out, and I actually can here, um, oops, the wrong pen. You know, you put these things down, and they just disappear on you. Hmm. I can't believe I'm looking for a pen while a video is going on. Let me pause this. All right, we're back. So uh, just a quick little uh, demonstration here. I've got this grease pencil, uh, which allows me to sketch some stuff in. Um, so what I'm thinking is the ball is going to be starting here, about there. Uh, we're going to have it jump to over here. Right. This will be 30 frames later. Um, 
it's going to come and arc over and down uh, the way it will with physics. Um, so we're going to look at it uh, departing here at its highest velocity and returning down at about the same velocity. And up here, um, our vertical velocity will be uh, zeroed out. Um, so that means that when it leaps, it's going to be stretched in that direction. Um, we're going to anticipate that leap by doing a little squash up here because it's no longer traversing in a um, traversing in a uh, in a vertical motion. Uh, we're at the um, at the top of the point here. Um, we're going to head back down, and just before we impact, we're going to be stretched at its full velocity again. Um, we're going to follow through with a little bump and then we're going to recover back up to normal size, right? So sorry for the crazy sketching, but that's sort of what I think we're going to do. All right, that's my plan. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we execute that. Um, so I've got my ball. Um, I want to move up to my top level and I'm going to slide over at my starting place. Um, I know that's going to be at frame one and I'm going to give myself a keyframe. Um, I'm going to go over to my last frame, 24 frames later, and that'll be my end, and I will give myself a keyframe. Now, one thing that we have to realize is that even though that this is our blocking action, um, we do have to anticipate this. Um, so I think a quick anticipation of um, two or three frames tops, uh, so we can move these keyframes in, in two different ways. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and just tap here at this keyframe, the, ref, the left mouse button, a quick click. And now I can use the middle mouse button to drag this. So I'm going to give myself, um, I'm going to give three frames, two frames of anticipation. I'll maybe make it three. So we're going to go to frame four. And now I'm going to do the same thing over here, except I'm going to move it in the... Um, graph editor here. So I'm just going to type in 20, right? So that kicks all of those frames back. So everything that happens there will happen there. All right. So that's our move, right? So that's, we can get it, right? And we always want to watch our action. So I'm actually going to right click here. And it's hard to see this um, because it's moving this. I think it won't get up there. Whoops. Yeah. Down here, if you right click in here, you want to go to playback speed playback speed and choose play every frame max real time. Um, that way you know that you're getting as close to 24 frames per second as possible. Um, I believe up here in the HUD, there's probably a frame rate that will tell you exactly how fast you're playing back, which is not 24 frames per second. So uh, every now and then you want to right click down in the timeline and choose um, play blast. Uh, it's at the bottom of that menu. It'll run it out, and you can watch it back in real time. Uh, and it will tell you exactly uh, how fast things are going. So let's start with this again. Uh, we have this. Uh, we do know that here at the middle, that we're going to be at our top. Right? So now we can look and start looking at our curves. So we have um, up and down. Right? So we get that. But notice at the beginning of our curve, we're taking off slowly, right? And at the end of our curve, we are slowing down coming in. We can see that right here with this particular, um, with our translate Y uh, graph. We have a, um, a slow rise and then a slow fall. So one thing we want to do is make sure that we're departing the ground very quickly. So I'm going to adjust my tangents to lift this up uh, so that we've got a nice um, hard, uh, hard takeoff and a hard landing. So let's see what that looks like, right? That looks a little better. We can probably even go a little farther. Notice we're just constantly going to be watching this back and forth, right? It feels like we're still got some sliding in here and I know where that's coming from. We're moving across the Z axis and here it is. We are slow starting and slow stopping. Now, when you throw something or something has a velocity, it's going to travel at a relatively steady velocity all the way through. So I want this to be linear. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button right here, which is the linear tangents button. And that will linearize that curve for me. All right. 
So now we got this, right? Feels a little off, maybe a little cartoony. We're hanging in the air a little too much. And that's because our tangents here are pushed too hard and we have got too much flat space through here. So I can adjust those down a little bit if I'd like. And I do like that a little bit. Um, just bring them down so we have a nice parabola there. All right, so that's a good starting place. So that is now sort of our rough in jump before we've added our anticipation, any of our follow through and any of our stretch and squash. And now we can, now that we've got this, um, it's important to uh, right click and play blast it again and make sure we're watching it at the right speed. Boom. Boom. Yeah, totally feels different when we're play blasting it. All right, so we want to build our energy into this. Um, so we're going to lean on our principles of animation and we're going to do um, all of this action is going to be done with the uh, scale key. I mean, the scale um, keyframes. So I'm going to switch to our scale tool, uh, hitting R, and I'm going to hit Shift R. And that's going to create a keyframe for our scale. Now, you may have noticed that I have auto key turned on down here, which allows me to make adjustments um, and automatically get keyframes in return. All right, so we've got auto key turned on. Uh, we can see things arrive here. And actually, this is going to be pretty quick uh, because here we're departing, right? And we know that we want to be fully extended to our stretch at, at this frame, frame four, right? Um, so we only really have one frame of anticipation before we um, pop up to that full um, full stretch. So let's just take a look at how that's going to be. Uh, so I'm just going to squash this down. Um, and you'll notice that that's our energy building right there. And then at this frame, we're going to be stretch to our maximum amount. And I'm just going to take note of what our maximum amount is going to be and kind of round in numbers here a little bit. 1.2. That'll be enough. Um, so it looks pretty bad. But we know here um, we want to be zeroed out. Actually, scaling zero your scale means one. And then we're going to be maximum velocity here right before impact. So Again, 1.2, and then post-impact, we're going to be back down. Squashed, and then back here at frame 24, 1. So that lays it out, right? So you kind of can see what our scale factor here. And we just did everything in scale Y, and I'm going to hit F to frame this out. So we can see that we have a build up and then back to zero and then a stretch and then recovery right so that's sort of what we're looking for in a curve let's see how that looks that looks pretty straightforward right maybe a little awkward right so now we're going to need to massage um, this curve a little bit i think what we want to do is not have this one frame so i think we're going to start moving these frames together all around which is an important thing to note at this beginning section, um, we can make pretty big changes uh, without affecting um, too much right away. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take these keyframes. I'm just going to slide them ahead one frame so I can get an extra frame of my anticipation in here. There we go. So it builds and then we have this leap. And on the back end, that feels pretty good, but I'm just going to tap on a few more frames just so that we don't get um, disoriented um, with the looping um, so we can watch it play a little bit nicer. All right, so there we go. Um, so that's the beginning. The last part we want to do is make sure that our directions are taken care of, right? Where is this energy going? Right now, we get a full stretch and we expect the ball to go straight up. Uh, what we really want to do is make sure that the ball is going to travel in the direction it's going to go and then recover in the direction it's going to be, right? So let's see how we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and in this moment, I'm going to hit Shift-E. And I'm, oops, sorry. Let me switch to my 
hit E, switch to my um, rotation tool, and I'm going to hit Shift E. And that will give me a keyframe for rotation. Now I've got all of my channels um, taken care of, and there's a few that aren't doing anything, but we'll get to that. Looks like I obliterated my keyframes here on my timeline. There we go. So we've got our Shift E, and um, we have this anticipation happening here. And I can actually go ahead and rock this guy back a little bit. And now we're going to be anticipating our direction with a little rock backwards. And then when we're here, we want to be traveling in the direction we want to be going, right? And again, you can see this sort of playing out down here. So anticipating and then creating that direction. And it looks like we're not quite there yet. We want to be much more in that direction. Right, and then what I like to do is sort of mid-air, we do a slight correction, but on the way down, before we get to the impact there, we need to be fully in this direction. Right, so now we've translated how our motion is being directed. So let's take a look at how that, right? So now we just have our little recovery to do. And we're going to go ahead and take care of that recovery. Here is our final keyframe that we have. And then to this full uh, squash, we're going to rock forward. And then to this recovery, we're going to rock back, right? So I can just type in zero here. So that is, um, that is like a, a really vanilla methodology for uh, a jumping ball, but you can start, start playing with sort of the extremities of this now. We have this ball, maybe, maybe we want it to be a little bit more exaggerated, right? We can come in here now and we can choose to play with this however we want, um, either directly manipulating it in the graph editor here, and I'm holding down the middle mouse button and the shift key to make sure that I'm uh, moving in one direction. Um, and I think playing in the graph editor is really important uh, to figure out sort of um, how you want to deal with timings. Um, we can have a little bit of over rotation in here um, and then uh, kind of bring it in, you know, uh, depending on how you want to make this feel. Uh, one other thing that you might want to consider is um, avoiding something we call twinning. And twinning is when everything happens at the same time. And you can see that all my keyframes line up. And that's great for figuring out timings. Um, but for things like uh, recovering um, rotations in the end, like we don't necessarily want our rotations and our squash and stretch to all line up. Uh, so we can just um, play with, you know, trying to figure out if, if you want this recovery to be lasting a little bit longer than um, than the squash and stretch, or if you want it to just be a little bit offset. Um, sometimes um, these offsets make uh, so much sense. Um, you get a different set of energy buildups by putting the, um, the rotations and the squashing and stretching um, offset. So here we are. Um, we'll just have this be, and then actually what I'm gonna do is one last little I'm going to do an over-exaggeration, so I'll do an over-correction, right? We have rolled forward like this, so I'll push that down a little bit farther. I'm going to move my last frame out here a little bit, come back in here. I'm going to have a little over-correction backwards, so I get a negative, uh, positive value in here. It's probably too much. So now we have this little wobble back in here, so it kind of settles back into place, right? We get a little sticking point there. So... That is um, just sort of a, a real basic introduction to uh, the animation tools that we have for Maya um, and, uh, and sort of an overview of, of how to block in a, a really basic action like this. Um, so nothing fancy about this, um, but uh, hopefully you can sort of start to figure out um, your own workflow and how to deal with um, using the graph editor timeline and uh, dealing with keyframes and starting to introduce the principles of animation into your work. All right. Thank you.